This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Because I like a film, though, doesn't mean there's not a ton to talk about. I'd argue even more to talk about, in fact. The Hunchback of Notre Dame was, I'm just gonna say it, a daring film for Disney to make. This wasn't a fairy tale with the darker elements removed, this was a historical novel about the abuse of power in the church. Even hearing the title Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame took a lot of people time to get used to. It's like hearing Disney's The Haunting of Hill House, it's very bizarre. Despite the film unsurprisingly making changes, like focusing more on an ugly duckling angle rather than religious corruption, it wasn't quite the massive hit Disney was used to. I think there's a few reasons for this. One, it came off the heels of a profitable yet still underwhelming predecessor. Had it been released after Lion King, it probably would have done better. The other being it's so dark and adult compared to other Disney themes that I don't know what era it would have been a big hit. In the past, the religious angle would have been too controversial and turned people away, and in the present, the fact that it's hand-drawn would turn people away. But maybe that's why I like it so much. It's not a film that easily finds a home. Yet I, and many like me, have created one for it. Over the years, a following has grown for the movie who praise all the elements mainstream audiences just couldn't get into. The darker tone, the gothic music, the unconventional themes Disney rarely touched upon. But with that said, it is still Disney there's a lot of pandering that simply doesn't fit. But maybe there's an awkward charm to that too. So sit back and enjoy the, not perfect, but still one of my favorite Disney films of all time, this is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. The film opens with breathtaking music and imagery as we're introduced to the people of Notre Dame, specifically Clopin, the film's always present narrator for the first and last couple minutes. Hey, at least this one stay till the end. This scene. They're beautiful, no? They do not ring all by themselves. They don't? No, you silly boy. Ah, when a masked man talking to kids with puppets on the street was. No, it was creepy back then, too. He tells the story of gypsies trying to sneak under Notre Dame, but were caught by Claude Frollo, played by Tony Jay, who's a judge this time around, not an archdeacon. Judge Claude Frollo. You hear that? It's the sound of millions of confused girls swearing they don't have daddy issues. Yes, for whatever reason, Frollo has become a surprising sex symbol over the years. At first I was confused, but the more I thought about it, take out the hunchback and this is essentially a dominating romance novel. Tell me you couldn't see him in that religious trailer before Tropic Thunder. Satan's Alley. Why, yes, I will count how many women have to leave the room when he says something kind of sexual. Bring these gypsy vermin to the Palace of Justice. I call it that because it will be just us. <laughs> One of the gypsies runs, who you may be shocked to find out was actually Mary Kay Bergman, the actress who originally played Carmen's mom. Sanctuary, please give us sanctuary! So when she's killed and her son is taken from her, you might have a better idea why Furlough's so horrified. A baby? Okay, fine, whatever, go ahead! Four minutes in, and already this G-rated movie is on baby drowning. God, I wish those Saturday morning ads included that footage. It's everything you expect in a Disney classic. Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Ah! The Archdeacon stops him, though. This is an unholy demon. I'm sending it back to hell, where it belongs. Jesus, I love this asshole. Can you give some evil lessons to current Disney villains? They kinda suck now. The Archdeacon says the eyes of Notre Dame will damn Frollo if he commits such a heinous crime. But all the other stuff he does is cool. Care for the child, and raise it as your own. What? Let him live with you in your church. Live here. I kind of love how they both guilt trip the other into taking care of this kid. <laughs> you must raise him as your own. What? Oh, very well, but he must live here. What? I don't want him, don't you have a home? Yes, but it's... 
allergic to ugly. Oh, well, it must really sneeze, sneeze a lot, lot when, when you I come home. Oh, 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 he's staying here. Years go by, and the baby grows into a kind young man named Quasimodo, voiced by Tom Hulse. Will today be the day? Are you ready to fly? <laughs> hey, remember when Burger King tried to turn that into a big line? Will today be the day? Are you ready to fly? And it looks like everybody's getting into the act. Henry, what's in their popcorn? <laughs> and we're introduced to the characters people either hate or really hate. The gargoyles. This is the one element everyone can agree was botched. While their names are funny, Victor, Hugo, and Laverne, which was Victor Hugo's sister. A shame he didn't have a feminine middle name so that joke could work better. What the fuck? And the voice actors are great with Jason Alexander, Jane Weathers, and Charles Kimbrough. They feel incredibly shoehorned in and the writing for them never gets a laugh. All right, all right, pour the wine and cut the cheese. Especially coming off of comedic roles that please both kids and adults, this really needed a comedy facelift. Give her some slack, then reel her in. Then give her some slack, then reel her in. Then give her some slack. Knock it off, Hugo. She's a girl, not a mackerel. If only Alexander's lines were replaced with Duckman lines, then we'd have gold. Sue me, I'm colorful. Doesn't mean I belong in here making potholders with the wackos. Every day is an agonizing ordeal, like balancing a pot of scalding water on your head while people whip your legs and butt. Honestly, Frilla's teaching of the alphabet gets a bigger laugh. A. Abomination. B. Blasphemy. C. Contrition. D. Damnation. E. Eternal damnation. Well, now we know where Mel Gibson learned his ABCs. Quasi wants to join the Festival of Fools, but Frollo claims he can't because he ugly. You are deformed. I am deformed. And you are ugly. And I am ugly. And these are crimes. This is the feel-good song, right? Do as I say, obey. Quasi sings about how wonderful it would be to become accepted, and though Tom Hulse's voice is shakier than Sarah Brightman being electrocuted. Out there, like ordinary man. He still sings it with so much heart and passion, I don't think it would have worked as well if he was dubbed. He sings about all the tough questions. How much value do we place in looks? Who killed Aladdin's carpet? Why does Notre Dame not have satellite TV? And is this the weirdest prequel to Beauty and the Beast? Come on, I said there were tough questions, not good questions. Captain Phoebus enters town, played by Kevin Klein, who sees a gypsy named Esmeralda, played by Demi Moore, accosted by a guard, played by Patrick the Starfish. Maybe a day in the stocks will cool you down. Yes, it was ironic he wasn't a gargoyle in this. Phoebus goes with his horse Achilles, named only so they could do this joke. Achilles, heal. <laughs> to the Palace of Justice, reporting for duty under Judge Frollo. I'm sure you'll whip my men into shape. He explains how the gypsies are warping the minds of Paris and taking her gerbs! So they must be dealt with like a nest of insects. What are we going to do about it, sir? It always drove me nuts he never put that piece back right. Oh well, I'm sure it's the worst damage that'll befall the place. The Festival of Fools begins as Quasimodo sneaks his way in. Dance la Esmeralda! As fun as this number is, the real entertainment is in the crowd. Whether it's men pounding on women's heads, standing absolutely still, or having a mid-90s computer-generated seizure, they're easily the funniest things here, apart from this line. Look at that disgusting display. Yes, sir. Ironically, people will remember Demi more as this erotic dancer than when she was actually an erotic dancer. Make a face that's horrible and frightening. Make a face that's gruesome as a gargoyle's wing. Hey. Doesn't even make sense. Who's scared of a gargoyle's wing? You said that because it rhymes with Ning. It's the bell ringer from Notre Dame. Quasi is crowned the king of fools as he technically makes the ugliest face there and the crowd loves him. Yeah, I think some of them may have dropped quaaludes before showing up. I shall cheer with extreme indifference. But the crowd turns on him rather sporadically. I get the idea they're supposed to be drunk, but they're trying to combine the King of Fools celebration with where he's being whipped, both from the book, and it's two very opposite scenes shoved together. Did every crowd member bring rope in case this weird-ass moment would break out? It's like if in Return of the King everybody bows and then they're suddenly like, Hey, they're short! I'm sorry. This wasn't supposed to happen. Esmeralda is the only one to show kindness to Quasi, though it is funny that she still calls him a creature. <laughs> Just as soon as I free this poor creature. I am not a creature! I am a thingamabob! A 
angering Furlow, who wanted to teach Quasi a lesson for leaving. You speak of justice, yet you are cruel to those most in need of your help. Silence! Justice! Again, you mean just us? <sighs> Frollo orders her to be arrested, and did I say comedy was not this movie's strong point? <laughs> yeah, I know. The crotch shots, the pinball thing. Don't forget the bowling sound effect. <laughs> yeah, can we move on to the depressing shit? Yeah, this is the good stuff. Yeah, make me feel awful. Go blue and gray as I watch someone suffer. Oh, the sadness, the overbearing sadness. Kids, I know you don't understand, but when you grow up to be a mean-spirited fuck like me, this is where the real entertainment is. And those of you who grow up happy and full of life, we'll get you. As Marilla enters Notre Dame and comes across Phoebus. You sneaky son of a- uh, 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 watch it. You're in a church. And the Disney film, we can let all this lie by saying the B word is a Mickey no no. So they have a Monkey Island style battle of insults. One of them funny. You fight almost as well as a man. Funny. I was going to say the same thing about you. And one so bad, it might be my favorite joke in the entire movie. Oh, I didn't know you had a kid. Oh my god, I can't even look at you, joke. I can't even look at you. Furlow sees them and realizes she claims sanctuary, but that doesn't stop him from seeking vengeance. Gypsies don't do well inside stone walls. <sighs> I know what you're imagining. Cloud the mind with unholy thoughts. Okay, how has that face not become a meme yet? <laughs> That's an expression that says, Dude, I'm supposed to be two years older than Snow White? And she's 14? The fuck, Disney? Set one foot outside, and you're mine. Furlow posts guards around every door while Esmeralda talks with the Archdeacon. Letting the crowd torture that poor boy? I thought if just one person could stand up to him, then... <sighs> what do they have against people who are different anyway? I mean, when I met him, I said he had a great mask and then jumped back in fear when I saw it was his face. I'd expect people to treat me the same way. She sings a powerful song about God helping the outcast, once again utilizing the cathedral's beauty, and encounters Quasi once more. It's got a friend with it. Yeah. Maybe today wasn't a total loss after all. A vision of loveliness. The one in the dress ain't bad either. Okay, so the filmmakers said they wanted to leave it open whether the gargoyles were actually alive or in Quasi's imagination. I guess I could buy that the guards aren't really being stopped by them in the climax, and that's just part of his wishful thinking. But here's my question. What's with the goat love? Every second one of them is hitting on this animal, and if that's supposed to be in Quasimodo's mind, I fucking got someone I think you should talk to! Did you make all these things yourself? Quasi and Esmeralda hit it off, and he explains his connection with Frollo. How can such a cruel man have raised someone like you? Cruel? Oh no! He saved my life! He said my mother was gonna kill me with kindness, <laughs> whatever that means! Quasi helps her escape, and he's filled with joy, singing... The one before Hellfire. I always skip it, and so do you. Yep, it's time for everybody's favorite part of the movie. Arguably the best Disney villain song. In fact, it's so good Disney wouldn't even do another villain song until 13 years later. How crazy is that? 13 years without another animated villain song. Though I did hear they were going to do more songs for modern Disney villains. And funny enough, they all have the same title. Surprise! I was the villain and the worst part of the movie. It's not my fault. I'm not to blame. This song has everything. It's big. It's haunting. It's gothic. It's intense. It's visually stunning. It almost got the film a PG rating for being too sexually provocative. They got around it by outlining Esmeralda's clothes more, as she was practically naked in the original. Let's see that with a gawking Frollo make one of the little candies in the Hunchback movie cups. Destroy Esmeralda and let her taste the fires of hell. I can't even count how many covers of this song there are on YouTube. It's almost like this movie that already gained a following grew yet another following just with this song alone. It kicks ass just as much now as when it first came out. It still stands as one of the best musical moments in Disney history. All I gotta say is, my count for how many women left the room exploded when I merely mentioned this song. Why haven't you burned down a city and risked going to hell for me? Hello. 
This is the universe. I know it may be odd that the universe has a voice like this. Chances are I won't have a voice by the time I'm done with the sponsorship, but I committed to a bit and I'm gonna follow it all the way through. Being the universe, it's good to know what's important. And as we slowly adjust to a new normal, we still need to be smart about how we do business. Luckily, there's stamps.com to make things easier. The universe really thinks about stamps.com. A lot. Thousands of small business owners have discovered the benefits of stamps.com. <coughs> wow. They've been able to keep their businesses running and avoid the crowds at the post office. All from their own computers. With stamps.com, you can print postage on demand and avoid going to the post office. Wow. It's the longer sentences that are tough. Anywho, you'll save money with discounted rates you can't even get at the post office. Stamps.com also offers UPS services with discounts up to 62% and no residential surcharges. Wow, man. Oh, this was a mistake. But you know it's not a mistake. Stamps.com. Stamps.com brings all the mailing and shipping services you need right now to your computer in the comfort of your home or office. Whether you're a small business sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or just working from home and you need to mail stuff, Stamps.com can handle it all with yes. Somehow this voice is hurting my jaw weird, but I'm the universe. I do what I, well, I do whatever I want. <coughs> oh yeah, <coughs> it feels so good. Where was I? Oh yeah, Stamps! Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Should I had a cup of water before I did this? Once your mail is ready, just leave it for your mail carrier. Schedule a pickup or drop it in a mailbox. It's that simple. Unlike this voice, this voice is not very simple to do. With Stamps.com, you get great discounts too. Five cents off every stamp and up to 62% off UPS and UPS shipping rates. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. And right now, my viewers, you know, viewers of the universe, can get a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage and a digital scale. Without any long-term commitment, yikes. Almost there, come on. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in nostalgia. That's stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in nostalgia to get your special offer today. Do it. It's the universe telling you to do it. Not some guy who's killing his voice and won't be able to do his work tomorrow because he threw out his vocal cords. It's worth it for stamps. Stamps. Bye. This was the universe. <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> Like our videos? Subscribe to be notified about them. Want to actually be notified about them? Click on that bell as well. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Playing some games, telling some jokes, and overall having a good time. Hope to see you there. So after another pretty hilarious line... Are you feeling all right? I had a little trouble with the fireplace. I burned my soul, among other things. Furlow does a citywide search to find Esmeralda, even burning down a home with a family inside who gave refuge to gypsies. Phoebus saves them, and Esmeralda saves Phoebus despite being injured while escaping. You know, that windmill with that family inside is the first place we've seen him burn down, and Phoebus isn't the captain of the guards anymore. Are we to assume there were people in all those buildings he burned afterwards? Mmm, didn't think of that one, did you, MPAA? No, that P's not going in front of that G, that's there to stay! Don't worry, Disney Plus will just put up another disclaimer. Too scary, kids? Look, there's the gargoyles! Too awesome, parents? Look, there's the gargoyles. 
but now don't you say anything to upset Quasimodo. What drives me nuts about this scene where they don't want to let Quasi know things have gotten worse is it almost could have worked if they handled the timing better. Like, okay, here's how the scene should play. Not a word. Easy, that's stone faced. Any sign of her? Oh, it's a lost cause! Not bad, might get a chuckle. Now, here's how it actually plays out. Any sign of her? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a lost cause! It just took too long. It also doesn't help that the moral of the story is appearances don't matter, yet they constantly mock each other for how they look. I thought I was the cute one. No, you're the fat, stupid one with the big mouth. You're also porking up too, Quasi! Eat a salad and stop being so ugly! I'm terrible at this. Did someone say, thank God they don't have a song? She wants you so any moment she'll walk through that door. Yep, the Gargoyles get a musical number in this, and you're held hostage until it's over. Aside from this cute in-joke. <laughs> this song could be cut, and you would miss nothing. This was one of Jane Weather's last films to work on, and man, how do you think she must have found this experience saying terrible jokes but getting a great paycheck for it? It was hell on earth, I loved it. Thankfully, it's a short song, though, and Esmeralda arrives with Phoebus, allowing Quasi to find out she's in love with him. Shall we wait for Quasi to leave? No, sewing stitches sex is the best kind of sex. Are you sure he's okay though? Yeah, he's fine. But Frollo arrives and Quasi has to hide a passed out Phoebus. Is there something troubling you, Quasimodo? I know there is. <laughs> he reveals that he knows Quasi helped Esmeralda escape and freaks out on him. Now all Paris is burning because of you. In hindsight, I could have asked before I killed hundreds of people, but I don't think when I'm horny, angry. Furlow says he knows where her hideout is, so Phoebus goes to save her while Quasi stays behind. What am I supposed to do? Go out there and rescue the girl from the, from the jaws of death and the whole town will cheer like I'm some kind of a hero? I mean, it's exactly what the script says. Huh? Quasi decides to go with Phoebus, and they stumble upon the Court of Miracles, where they're almost hanged. It's a double header! A couple of Frodo spies! We're just fighting against the stereotype that we're murderous thieves! Now hold still while we kill you in our den of stolen goods! Stop! Esmeralda saves them, though, just in time to be captured again by Frollo. Dear Quasimodo, I always knew you would someday be of use to me. <gasps> I always assume I'd stuff you and put you outside to scare off solicitors, but this is far better. They get ready to burn Esmeralda as Frollo makes her one last offer. Choose me or the fire. What's wrong with her? She's crazy. He's gorgeous. Quasi is chained up and the gargoyles try to convince him to break free. You can't let Frollo win. He already has. These chains aren't what's holding you back, Quasimodo. Leave me alone. I mean, we could always sing again. <laughs> Quasi finds the will to break free, and with some of the best animation and music in the movie, he sweeps in and carries Esmeralda back to the cathedral. Well, if I know the book, we have a few days before people barge in, or we're doing the supercut, that's cool. The guards try to burst in, and we have a comedic climax, because that's just what Disney did for a while. And Quasimodo fights them off. <laughs> This might be the only time I didn't put that sound effect in. <laughs> Give credit, we do finally get a funny scene from the gargoyles. Fly, my British, fly, fly! <laughs> I got a laugh, that's a good joke. Quasi pours molten lava onto the crowd, forcing the soldiers to fall back. This looked worse. Quasi tries to wake up Esmeralda, but it looks like she didn't survive the burning. Yeah, okay, it's pretty obvious even a Disney film as dark as this one isn't going to kill her off after all that. But I don't think it matters because it leads to some really great scenes. Quasi crying over losing his only friend, Furlow sneaking in, having an almost twisted conversation. Even the gargoyles get kind of an emotional moment. Oh no. Aw, maybe we should sing for him. A guy, guy like, like you! you. Frollo tries to literally stab him in the back, but Quasi stops him and sees Esmeralda is awake. <laughs> By the way, let's set the record straight. Everyone thinks this is Pumbaa, and it's actually not. 
the reason I know this is because Pumbaa is actually dead and being carried off in an earlier scene. Anything else I can do to make this movie darker? I'm sure they hung Woody in there somewhere. Furlough and Quasi are found hanging from the cathedral, Quasi faints out of nowhere because it's dramatically convenient, and Frollo lights up like a jack-o'-lantern. No, seriously, his eyes and mouth light up. I have no idea why and I don't care. It's fucking awesome. Plunge them into the fiery pit. Joke's on you. Scientology was the true religion. Ha 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 Look out, Xenu! Here we come! Quasi is saved by Phoebus, and as payment, he demotes himself to the friend zone. Quasi is brought out into the world and is immediately accepted by the people. Until they get drunk and throw shit at him again, but I think there's a grace period. Three cheers for Quasi Should we really have mocked how he looks? I mean, we're giving off a bit of a sea monkeys look over here. We look like people who end our summers with a wicker man. <laughs> the crowd cheers, everybody lives happily ever after, and... That's certainly not how the book ends, but who gives a shit? This movie's fucking awesome. There are clearly problems with it when compared to the original, and even if you don't compare it, the tone can be jarring with some of the more awkward moments. But I'm sorry, it in no way comes close to overshadowing the good stuff. It's dark, it's epic, it has memorable characters, a phenomenal villain. It's a visual marvel even all these years later. The music is beautiful, and even though it never became a mainstream smash, it has a fan base that loves the hell out of it. I will say, if you want a version that's even darker and more adult, you should probably check out Disney's stage musical. It's a perfect combo of both the book and the film, and it does go to even darker places that honestly I didn't think Disney had the balls to go to. But even with that out there, this remains one of Disney's riskiest films. And it's nice to know that not only did it pay off, but its fan base is growing day by day. Check it out if you haven't, and even if you have, watch it again. There's always something to appreciate with every view. And it'll be interesting to see what they do with a live-action remake. I mean, Christ, it's gotta be better than... This isn't a segue for... Oh, no! I had a little trouble with the fireplace. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Once again, we are doing one uh, tied into people helping with uh, COVID-19. And this week we are doing uh, Matthew 25 Ministries. And what they do is uh, they are an international humanitarian aid and disaster relief organization helping the poorest of the poor locally, nationally, and internationally. Uh, to date, they've distributed over uh, 1,500,000 pounds of supplies, including masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes, paper products, soap, batteries, diapers, plus other kinds of personal protective equipment, personal care products, and cleaning items to more than 750 of its partners. Man, that's that's grand. I mean, that's that's so much. And, uh, you know, if you look them up, you see they not only have, I mean, just great reviews from, like, Charity Navigator, uh, but they just do so much good work, and they just work endlessly to try and get protective gear, and, I mean, everything you just heard, uh, to people that really need it. So, uh, you can, once again, check them out, either see if you can volunteer, uh, of course, donate, uh, or if not, just spread the word. Just look into the good stuff they do, and, uh, Share a link, tell a friend, do whatever you can, because, again, there's so many good people doing so many good things at, you know, really tough times like this. So show them all the support you can. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.